Step two, recursive classical networks. In this step, we're going to use recursion to forward information through a classical network. So recursion offers a uniform approach through generalization. In the previous step, we said that this generalization occurs when we consider a subset of a network as a single node at a different layer. So forwarding in recursive networks is guided by two principles. The first one is that the source does not need to understand the topology or the technology of a forwarding network. And the second one is that forwarding occurs at different layers of a network more cleanly than in the two-layer EGP, IGP system. We're going to introduce the concept of a transit network. This is the network that does not include the destination of, uh, of the packet. So the packet just simply passes through this network. And in the recursive classical networks, such a transit network appears as a single node to the external source. The source doesn't care about the internal details of such a network. It only thinks about it as a single node along the path to the destination. So the image that we have in mind is something like this one. In here, we've got five different networks represented by these uh, disjoint clouds. This network over here contains this yellow node, which is the source of our connection. And this network over here contains the red node over there as the destination. So the packet has to pass through these nodes along this path through this transit network over here until it reaches the network that contains the red destination node. But as we said, to the source, any of these single nodes might actually represent uh, entire networks, recursive networks or other transit networks at different layers. For example, this one over here could actually represent the following network. But it doesn't need to stop there. Any of these nodes of this transit network could also represent a further network at a lower layer. Now let's think about an example. How do we do resolution and forwarding? And we introduce the following algorithm from recursive classical networks. This simple algorithm looks for the destination of the original message. So the algorithm or the function is called deliver and it takes the data of the packet, the source address, and the destination address. Let's break it down into more simple pieces. In classical networking, if a node receives a packet, it is implicitly understood that this packet should be forwarded to its destination. So the node needs to inspect and determine, am I the destination or am I not? What the node does First is it may actually do some processing on the received data of the packet, generating new data. And then it asks the question, am I the one who the packet is uh, destined for or not? This happens inside this while loop over here. So while here or my address is not the destination, I run the following code. First, I'm going to set the pound flag to be false because I'm not the destination. And then I'm going to run a for loop through all of the lower layers that are below me. Remember, in recursive networks, a single node may represent an entire network at lower levels. So the node passes the packet down the protocol stack. It runs this for loop for each layer and it must translate the original source destination and the lower layers into variables new source and new destination corresponding to the lower layers. And it runs the following function again recursively. This deliver function, it runs it with new data, new source and new destination. This is where the recursion occurs in a recursive classical network. If the output of this function is true, it means we found the destination somewhere at the lower layer. If, however, it quits that loop and we find ourselves over here, it means that throughout the whole time, the found flag has been false. It means we did not find the destination uh, for the packet.
the packet failed to deliver. However, if we output true, then the destination was found and the packet was delivered. Let's think about the protocol stack in the TCP IP model. We've got four layers. At the top, we've got the application layer. Below that is the transport layer, the internet layer, and the network access layer. And each of these layers has a multitude of its own protocols. For example, in the application layer, we've got the DNS, the FTP, HTTP, NFS, SMTP, and many, many, many more serving different needs. At the transport layer, we've got the usual TCP or the UDP and others. At the internet level, we've got the IP version 4, IP version 6, IPSEC, and down at the bottom, close to the physical layer, at the network access layer, we've got the Ethernet, the WLAN, and other link layer protocols. This is just to show you how many different protocols there are in the traditional layering of the quantum of the internet, of the classical internet. The recursive network architecture in classical networks strives to use a single but tunable protocol for different layers and to utilize some of the existing protocols for communication across the different layers. And we're going to take this basic idea and try to apply it to quantum network architecture as well. We're going to see how in the following steps.